In this lesson, we'll get our steel columns in place. So let's continue. All right, we have our plates here. We're ready to move to the next step of our steel design here. And we're going to get our columns in place. Now to do that, I'm going to, again, I'm going to make sure I'm in my structure tab here. And we're going to go load, uh, actually go with our column button here. So once we're in there, there's a couple of things you want to set before you move on. Um, first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to let Revit know that I'm not dealing with the depth. Uh, if I kept this here at depth on my option bar at 9 feet, this will actually make my structural member go down, uh, basically in the negative direction. Uh, maybe acting as a, a structural member of a, uh, holding something up from the bottom up. But that's not what we want to do in this case. We're actually working from level 1 up. We don't want to go down. Um, so I'm going to make sure I tell Revit that this depth is, needs to be a height. And I want that unconnected height to be set to 10 feet. So what that is going to tell Revit that at the top of my beam needs to stop at 10 feet. Um, so once I have that in place, or my column actually, once I have that in place, um, I can place my columns here uh, like so wherever we want to. Um, or I can come here and select the type. And I'm going to select the type. Um, a lot of my projects, I've often worked with, uh, you know, these wide flanges here. We're going to do a combination of both. I want to see how, show you how we can work with both. So we'll, for our columns, we're going to use the hollow steel uh, sections, the rectangular sections. And then for our beams, we'll actually work with the wide flanges. So let's go hunt down a, uh, a hollow steel section. So what we're going to do, again, we're going to go to edit type. We'll go to load. And we are going to work with the structural columns. So I'm going to work with the structural columns folder. We're going to work with steel. And we're looking for the steel section here. So don't want to get it twisted here. Uh, this one's actually the uh, circular shape here, the round hollow section. What we're looking for is this rectangular one here. So I'm going to click OK. And this part here is where we can actually come through here and select what type we want. Um, this is going to really come in handy here. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go with a 6 inch by 6 inch by quarter inch. And I know that's going to be an exact square, not a rectangle. So I'm going to pay attention to what's going on here. This column here will let me know if what I'm dealing with a rectangle or a square that's exactly the same on all sides. And I'm also going to pay attention to here. This will tell me the dimensions of my uh, section here. So right now we're at 18, and I'm pretty sure it's way down here. And again, we're looking for a 6 by 6 by a quarter. There we go. I think we just passed it here. 6 by 6 by a quarter. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to select OK. I'm not going to change anything, so I don't, no need to duplicate or change names. But I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to make sure we're on height, unconnected, and 10 feet. Now, if since we only have four plates here, I can you know really quickly drop four columns in place. But I want to show you what you can do if you have a lot more going on with your column grid. I'm going to simply place that column that's on my mouse here, I'm going to place it at the grids. And I'm going to tell Revit I want it to place it at this one, this one. And what you need to do is you need to select the intersections where you want to place this. So anywhere there's an intersection, there will be a column placed. So I need to go ahead and select these, holding down my control button. And once I have all my grids selected, that way all my intersections are going to be highlighted. I'm going to say finish. And like that, our columns are in place here. And we can make some adjustments. I could see that my, my midpoint's off. And I think it's probably off with our guy here. So I'm simply going to use my uh, align tool. And we're going to want to align this reference line with this midpoint. And that's exactly what it was. And we'll do the same thing here just to make sure this one's not off. So we'll use the align tool. We'll align this reference point with this midpoint. But it looks like we're in good shape. So now that I have that in place and all these other ones are in place, let's jump to 3D view to see how this looks. Perfect. So we're going to make our tower a little bit taller. So the neat thing about working with columns is as you're working, you can actually change the size of your columns while they're already in place. Um, so I know that in this tower, I'm going to want this one um, from our elevations here. We're going to want this tower to be 45 feet. So we're going to want two of the tallest columns to reach 45 feet. And then we'll have the two on the opposite side stopping at level 5. So let's jump back to 3D view. And let's make a decision on what side's going to be the taller side. So let's go with north. That's a little bit easier. So we'll select these two. 
and let's change their unconnected height. Again, they're going to be 45, 45 feet. I'm going to click apply, and we'll select these two, and these guys are going to be 40 feet. And we can make adjustments later on if we want to adjust our design a little bit. So essentially what that did for us was, um, you'll see right now everything looks like a stick figure. Um, let's jump to a hidden line view, and right here next to hidden line in my detail, we're in course, so everything's going to look like a stick when you're working with structural members. I like to work in medium. Um, that way, if I am dealing with rectangular hollow steel sections like this, it's going to show all my corners and edges. If I go too fine, it might show it to look like a circular section, so we don't want that. So I like to stay in medium in that case. But you saw when I did that, it actually rep brought up the thickness to represent my structural members. So you can see here, we're looking on one side where the columns are even. And let's jump to another side, and you can see how our design's turning out here. Looks like we've got to make the same change here. Simply going to change our level to medium. And there you go. You can see we're going to have a nice uh, angled pitched roof uh, later on down the line in our design. So now that our columns are in place, um, I think we're about ready to get these beams going. So I'll uh, see you in the next lesson to get these beams in place.